Welcome to Electron Line and continuing in the search for the answers for the Big Bang. So, we put up the COBE satellite to measure the CMB, the Cosmic Microwave Background. What was COBE? Well, COBE was a satellite that was launched into space so we could measure the cosmic background radiation all around us that was permeating the universe. Why did we want to do that with a satellite? Well, even though we're able to make measurements on the Earth, a large portion of the radiation moving through the atmosphere was blocked by the atmosphere. It turns out that the kind of radiation that's floating around in space, the cosmic background radiation, is the atmosphere is almost completely opaque to that radiation. Anything between 1 and 10 millimeters in wavelength doesn't make it through the atmosphere very easily. So to take better readings, we build a telescope with an instrument that could measure this radiation and put it in space. So in 1989, COBE was launched into space and we began to make readings. And what we found was absolutely astounding. Not only did we find a very accurate measurement for the wavelength of the radiation, it turns out the wavelength that was measured was equal to 1.064 millimeters. And what we found was so astounding was that the variation was almost zero. There was almost no variation in the frequency and the wavelength of the radiation permeating all of the universe the background radiation. It was very, very tightly around that value. So when we plug that value into Wien's, into Wien's law, and uh, let's do that. So let's say that the temperature, therefore, is equal to 0 0.0029 divided by, and we have to convert that to meters, which is 0 0.000, oh, not 0, but 1064 meters. And that will, of course, be um, Kelvin times meters. That's the constant, if we have the units correct. So the answer would be in Kelvin, we get 0 0.0029 divided by 0 0.001064 equals, and it turns out that gave us a temperature, T, of about 2.74, I think the actual answer would be 2.74 Kelvin. Wow. So we end up with a very accurate measurement for the wavelength of that cosmic background radiation. From that, we found the very accurate temperature of the current temperature of the universe. And on top of that, we discovered that the radiation is extremely uniform, just absolutely extremely uniform all throughout the universe, which is really amazing when you think about it, because if you go back in the history of the universe and you remember that 13.8 billion years ago when the universe first started, that radiation was already present in the universe. And the universe must have been filled with that radiation. Of course, at that point, the, the wavelengths would be much, much shorter, the temperature of the universe much, much hotter, as predicted by Ralph Alpha and Robert Herman back in the 1940s, late 1940s. We then surmised that the universe was so hot, it must have been furiously fusing hydrogen to helium, explaining why today 25% of all the hydrogen had been fused into helium. And the whole universe is now about 25% helium and 75% hydrogen. So what we can then surmise as well is that during the 13.8 billion years, the universe expanded to what it is today, and the wavelengths that must have then been, or the radiation that must have existed at these very tiny wavelengths way back then in the beginning of the universe had now expanded to a wavelength of 1.064 millimeters. So what was the wavelength of the radiation then? And there's a very big result of that in our understanding of the Big Bang that comes from that. So let's try to figure out what the length of the wavelength should have been back in the days when nuclear fusion took place. And remember, nuclear fusion can only take place if the temperature is at least 10 million degrees. So if we then go find the wavelength from this equation, so we can say that the wavelength is equal to 0 0.0029 divided by the temperature, and if we then plug into the temperature, the temperature that the universe must have been at least for nuclear fusion to take place, we can then figure out what the wavelength must have been, what the radiation size must have been back then when the fusion process finally stopped, when the universe cooled down to the point when the universe dropped below 10 million degrees, and then at that point, the universe could no longer fuse hydrogen to helium. When that event stopped, what was the temperature of the universe, and therefore we should also know the size of the universe compared to the size of the universe today. And let me show you why. So the wavelength is going to be equal to 0 0.0029 divided by the temperature of 10 million degrees, like so. So let's find out what the wavelength was then. So today it's 0 0.001064 meters. What was it then? So we take this and we go 0 0.0029 divided by 10 million equals, and we get 
lambda was equal to 2.9 times 10 to the minus 10 meters, which is less than a nanometer. Wow, that was extremely small. So when nuclear fusion finally stopped in the universe, if that was indeed what happened back then, and we assume it did, at that moment, when the universe's temperature dropped below 10 million degrees, that's when the wavelengths were at this length, 2.9 times 10 to the minus 10 meters, and this is what the wavelength is today. So let's do that ratio. Remember that as the universe expanded, the wavelengths of the radiation expanded as well. If the universe became twice as big, the wavelengths would be twice as big. If the universe was a thousand times as big, the radiation would have been a thousand times as big. And since we know the size of the radiation today, and we can calculate what the radiation size must have been at the very end of the nuclear fusion process, we can see how much the universe has grown in size. So, lambda today, the wavelength today, divided by the wavelength of the early universe. So that ratio will show us how much the universe has grown in size. So this is equal to today, would be 0 0.001064 meters, and back then it was 2.9 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. So what ratio is that? How much has the universe grown in radius since that time? And so when we go back, we go 0 0.001064 divided by 2.9, Exponent 10 minus equals, and I need to convert that to different units, 3.7 million times. So that ratio is equal to 3.7 million. So, if we say that the universe back then was this big, the universe today would be in radius or in diameter 3.7 million times bigger. Wow. That's an amazing discovery. Now knowing what the radiation length is of the background radiation today, and knowing how radiation stretches along with the stretching of space, we can see that the size of the universe has grown by 3.7 million times just in the diameter. For volume-wise, you'd have to cube that number. So cubing a million, that would be a trillion. Well, million squared would be, oh, way bigger than that. Huge, really enormous. I'd have to get my calculator out again. But the universe has grown in such tremendous way since the early stage of the universe. Again, if we assume that at the very beginning the universe was so hot that, according to Ralph Alpha and Robert Herman, the universe was fusing hydrogen into helium. Wow, what a discovery. Look how big our universe is today compared to what it was back then. So this, again, seems to support the idea that Hubble, when he surmised that the universe has been expanding, for the entire life of its history, and that when things are twice as far away from each other, things move twice as fast, therefore space is expanding. If space is expanding, radiation must be expanding, and if that's all true, then the universe was this tiny in the beginning, and this enormously big today. Wow, we're beginning to put the pieces of the puzzle together, and realizing that the universe has grown tremendously in size since then. Well, still interested? Stick around and we'll show you some more tremendous discoveries that slowly add up to the total puzzle of how we think the universe started.